It's time now for Maple in the Morning with your host, Stacy Maple. Maple in the Morning is heard here on WPCR and WPIB Radio at 10 a.m. and features guests excelling in their business or organization, local government officials, and those making news around our area. And now here's Stacy Maple with Maple in the Morning here on WPCR and WPIB Radio. Good morning. I'm Stacy Maple with Maple in the Morning on WPCR, PortClintonRadio.com, and also heard on our affiliate station, WPIB, PuttonBayRadio.com. This morning I have in the studio with me two very lovely women from the <laughs> Black Swamp Bird Observatory. I'm Kim Kaufman, the Executive Director, and Jasmine Cup, the Communications Director. Welcome, ladies. Thank you so much for having us. Well, so fun to have you in here and talk about one of our favorite pastimes up here on the North Shore, and that's birding. Everyone wants to know about the biggest week in American birding, and that's coming up soon. Well, this is the ninth annual Biggest Week in American Birding. Black Swamp Bird Observatory has been hosting and organizing this festival for the last eight years. So um, nine years we've been bringing birders to Northwest Ohio from literally all over the world. Um, the migratory birds are coming through. And the migratory birders are following them <laughs> to Northwest Ohio. So when we talk about the biggest week in American birding, what makes it so special up here? Well, what makes it special is that there's habitat for migratory birds. And if you look at the three main corridors that migratory, specifically songbirds, um, the little songbirds, warblers in particular, <laughs> um, the three main routes that they follow during migration, um, they take three separate routes, but all three routes converge over Northwest Ohio. And if you weigh less than an ounce and you don't swim and you don't even float well, you're very reluctant to cross big bodies of water. That's a daunting barrier. So these birds want to rest and refuel. They'll see that lake and think, okay, I better put the brakes on, stop eating a lot of insects, and be at my energetic best to power <laughs> across that big body of water. So all these birds converge on Northwest Ohio. They're packed into these little patches of remaining habitat, wooded habitat, right on the lake shore. And fortunately for us, most of those areas are managed by wildlife areas. So the state and federal agencies manage the areas for birds, make them accessible to the public, and we can invite birders here from all over the world and immerse them in the experience of spring songbird migration. That's wonderful. So some of the things that we take in place, obviously our, our little birds will be celebrated during that week, but you call it a festival. So as for someone like myself who really hasn't had the chance to come out, which maybe this will be the year I can finally make it, talk to us about the actual event. It sounds like there's a lot more going on than just viewing birds. Right. We have um, lots of workshops that are bird identification workshops. We have photography workshops, sketching workshops. We also have tours, which... Some of them are guided van tours where you'll be in an intimate setting with a, gu a specific guide and you'll go to a place. We also have other tours where you could drive yourself. And of course, there's always the famous McGee Marsh Wildlife Area Boardwalk where the warblers are right there. You can reach out and touch them, but you shouldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> but resist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anything you'd like to add to the, the whole idea of the festival? I, I want to make sure that we don't fail to make this point that we hope people will register for the festival, um, but they don't have to. You don't have to register for the biggest week in American birding to come out and enjoy bird watching. And it's the perfect time to do that, especially for people who have never done it before, because birders are some of the nicest people in the world. And they're so eager to share. So if you go to that McGee Marsh boardwalk, you're going to meet people from all over the world who are so excited about the birds and birding here that they'll show you how to identify birds, how to use optics. I mean, really the sharing and the, the social aspect of the event um, is one of the things I love the most about it. When you just brought the word optics, we were talking before we went on air about the use of some optics that will be available to the birders that are there. Yeah, it's one of those things where um, optics, having the right binocular and knowing how to use it can make all the difference in the world in your birding experience. And it can be intimidating. The one thing that I tell people is never go into a store and buy a binocular sealed up in plastic. <laughs> Don't do that. It's one of those products where the more you spend, the better off you are. So buy the most expensive binocular that you can afford. And I promise you that it'll, um, it'll be worth it. If you want to try birding and you want some help with optics, 
at Black Swamp Bird Observatory. We're located just inside the entrance to McGee Marsh Wildlife Area. Um, we can give the address, but people can Google search it too. <laughs> people are so Google savvy. Um, there's a big tent that we call Optics Alley. And a huge variety of optics dealers will be set up helping people with binoculars, offering them for sale. Um, and if photography is your thing, um, we also have an incredible array of photography companies and the Canon camera company will be loaning out cameras and lenses. And they got the big bad boy lenses too. <laughs> the big ones are like as big as your head. For 24 hours, um, as long as they're available, you can borrow Canon equipment and take it out into the field and use it for 24 hours for nothing. No catch. I promise. <laughs> um, last year they loaned out, um, just an astonishing number of cameras and lenses to people. So if photography is your thing, we got you covered there too. So <laughs> Optics Alley, the big tent at Black Swamp Bird Observatory. And you kind of put that on for some perspective too, that you had heard that this event, as far as uh, the loaning of equipment is only second to what event did you say? Yeah, um, just to, to give you a, um, an example of the scope of this event and how many people we're talking about, the Canon Company does this, um, this loaner program at other events. And the only time they've ever loaned out more cameras and lenses was at the Super Bowl. So this is like the Super Bowl of birding. <laughs> it is. It is kind of like the Super Bowl of birding. I love it. I know one other thing you had talked about that's going to be new this year is some shuttles that'll be, uh, at the event and those are going to be provided by Okta. And if you don't live here, who, who is Okta? People may not be familiar with that term. Um, the Ottawa County Transportation Agency. Um, one of the things about the biggest week is that there are lots and lots and lots of people that come to it and McGee Marsh Wildlife Area gets kind of busy with <laughs> birds and people. So one of the things that we're doing is Okta is partnering with Black Swamp Bird Observatory to have three stops inside of McGee Wildlife Area. And one of them is going to be Black Swamp Bird Observatory. The next stop is the Sportsman's Migratory Bird Center, which is I wouldn't say in the middle, but it's kind of in the middle of the park. And then another stop is the east side of the boardwalk, which a lot of people like to go to. And there's lots of parking there. So every half hour, there's going to be a rotation of shuttles. And that's really going to help people get back and forth between all of those spots inside of McGee. Probably will encourage some people, too, who might be kind of afraid to be able to get out there to come. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm talking this morning with Kim Kaufman and Jasmine Cup from the Black Swamp Bird Observatory. They're going to be getting ready for the biggest week in American birding, which is May 4th through the 13th. It's a 10-day birding festival that takes place right up here on the North Shore. If you are a birder or have a love for our little feathered friends, you should come on out. During that particular week, I know we talked about the songbirds and warblers, what other birds can people hope to see? I've been sending Jasmine out on birding missions <laughs> in the afternoons, but I think the bird, this iconic bird of Northwest Ohio and the Lake Erie Marshes, uh, the bald eagle, um, we are so fortunate to have a very healthy population of bald eagles, and it's hard to drive along the lakeshore right now without seeing at least a few. We are very blessed to have opportunities to cite them as often as we do. Um, Jasmine, is a, a, if you don't know, is a fantastic photographer. <laughs> and if you go to their Facebook page, Black Swamp Bird Observatory, mm -hmm. there's some beautiful photos of the birds right up here in Northwest Ohio that, that we're seeing now and that we have seen throughout the year. And um, We do have um, banding reports every day. We have a station that does banding, and that's a really good way to see up close the birds. And we do a report. Every day, well, they try to do one every day, and it gives the amount of the birds that they saw and a picture. That's a really good way to see the birds up close also. Is that on Facebook that you post mm -hmm. that then? Oh, wonderful. So, that's right. really, that's great to go there and check it out then. So go to the biggest week in AmericanBirding.com or also the Facebook page uh, for that particular event. You can also go to Black Swamp Bird Observatory or BSBO.org or their Facebook page to find some of those beautiful pictures and banding updates as well information on events, just like the biggest week in American birding that's coming up. If you are a first-time birder, what do you need to know before you come out to the park? We talked a little bit about having some binoculars or a camera, but what else do I need to take with me? You know, it's so easy to do. <laughs> if you just want to come out for a couple of hours, you don't really need anything. There's no birder uniform. You don't need special <laughs> <you> shoes sure? <laughs> or a hat. Um, nothing like that. Um, wear comfortable shoes, clothes that you're comfortable in. If you don't have binoculars, that's okay. 
In fact, the birds are oftentimes so close along the McGee Marsh boardwalk. One of the, one of the, the elements of it that makes it so special that you often don't even need binoculars. But, um, if you don't have binoculars and you want to try some, we'll loan you binoculars at Black Swamp Bird Observatory. Stop in. We'll make a copy of a driver's license or just, um, loan you some binoculars for the kids. And that's um, throughout the year, not just at the right. festival. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. All year round. So you don't really need any special gear to just to come out and walk along the boardwalk. Um, we talk a lot about the boardwalk at McGee, but you don't have to go there to see birds. Migratory birds are in every green space. I mean, we're, you know, we're sitting here, I'm looking outside and there are birds. I, it's hard not to be distracted, but, um, <laughs> our city parks, county parks, um, Anywhere that you can get yourself outside um, that's easy and accessible for you, you will see some migratory birds in those areas. So you don't have to come out to McGee Marsh, um, but it, it is a really special place. It's become one of the most iconic birding destinations in the Western Hemisphere during spring migration. Wow. How blessed we are to have it right here in our backyard like this. Very. If they haven't been to the boardwalk, is the boardwalk accessible for wheelchairs and uh, strollers? There is flat surface that if you are in a wheelchair or if you have a walker, there's great access for all mobility people. Um, there's also intermittently benches where you could stop and rest if you need to. Um so I'd say any any mobility is able to use the boardwalk. I know when my sons were small, I used to put them in a stroller, and, and they liked to go out. And we didn't go to the festivals, but just to take them out, you know, on a Saturday morning and, and get them outside. And they not just birds that they would look for. They would look for the caterpillars and the and the butterflies oh, and yeah, all the other things that are out there, and, too. The turtles and snails yeah. and all the little creepy crawly things the kids like. Talk to us a little bit more about the Black Swamp Bird Observatory itself, how it was founded, um, its mission and purpose, and um, make sure we clear that up in case anybody has any confusion about who is really supporting these wonderful efforts that are coming to the to the area. Yeah, thank you so much. That's something we're really focusing on this year because so many people have heard of the biggest week in American birding or Bird Week or whatever they call it, <laughs> um, but far fewer people know that Black Swamp Bird Observatory is the organization behind it. And in fact, we just celebrated our 25th anniversary. We were founded in 1992 and we're so much more than just the biggest week in American birding. We've been studying migratory birds on the lakeshore for more than 30 years. The, the projects predate, um, the inception of the bird observatory as a nonprofit. Um, so we know an awful lot about how birds are using the lakeshore habitats and what birds specifically. So we've got the timing of migration down almost to a science. So if a person really wants to see a black-throated blue warbler, we can look at the weather patterns, look at the historic data and say, okay, well, next week on Wednesday, call in sick and be at the lakeshore <laughs> to, to see, have your best chance of seeing, bla- right, to see a black-throated blue warbler. Um, but in, in addition to that, we also provide really dynamic education programs for K through 12 students and adults too. Um, and we are a nonprofit organization, um, funded by primarily by members and donations and grants. And we have a big membership drive going on right now. Um, anyone that enters, um, and becomes a member has a chance to win $6,000 worth of optics. It's top of the line. And what we do with that small investment of money is make those school programs absolutely free. They cost the schools nothing. Um, so we're pretty determined to keep kids connected with birds in the natural world. As far as uh, memberships, how do people become members? We'll make it easy for you. Um, you can go online. Uh, we have really easy to use and secure PayPal buttons. You can stop out at our nature store um, at the entrance to McGee Marsh Wildlife Area. We have a lovely little nature store, a window on wildlife where you can watch the birds at the feeders. Um, or you can mail us a check. Um, the best way to do it is to visit our website, bsbo.org. Um, there's lots of information. There are different levels that you can join. An individual membership is only $35, and we do really good things for Northwest Ohio with that small investment. When we were talking earlier about registering for the actual Biggest Week in American Birding, and you had said that online registration right now is, is closed, but that should not scare anyone from coming out and enjoying the week anyway. Is there actually a cost for registering for that week? Yeah, there is. Okay. Um, we... 
spend a tremendous amount of time planning and organizing this event. So the registration fee helps cover those costs. Um, since online registration is closed and a lot of the uh, guided van trips and things like that are sold out, there's still lots of activities available, but the cost of registration goes down to just $25. Um, and at a certain level, kids are free. I think it's under 10. Um, the, so you can bring your family out. It's pretty cost effective. Um, for that, um, small fee, you'll get a name badge. You will be eligible to go on walks twice every morning at McGee Marsh Wildlife Area led by world-class birders who are really, really good at teaching people how to look at birds. And it's a great thing to do with families. So even though online registration is closed, we'll still take walk-in registrations every day. That's at the festival headquarters at Mommy Bay Lodge and Conference Center. If you uh, would like to learn a little more about the Black Swamp Bird Observatory, you can go to their website, which is bsbo.org. Or for more information about the festival itself, go to biggestweekinamericanbirding.com. Uh, this morning I'm talking with Kim Kaufman and Jasmine Cup from the Black Swamp Bird Observatory. And we're looking forward to uh, some warm weather and seeing more birds coming through. It's been a long long spring <laughs> and i know we're all looking forward to a, a break in the weather and hopefully we we i think we may have it now finally um what other events are going on uh, that you guys sponsor besides the uh, the biggest week in american birding are there others saturday we have a members only uh spring migration walk which will be in the morning where black swamp bird observatory employees will take you out and you'll go looking for early spring migrants there's also a bird banding demonstration on Sunday, and that's a really neat way to see what we do at Black Swamp Bird Observatory. And that's also a part of the education programs that we host is that's one of the legs of that. One of the programs I see happening, I'm not sure if it's actually monthly, is the Hike the Dykes. Hike the Dykes, um, that is rotated in between McGee and Ottawa National Wildlife Refuge and... um. I think we already hosted ours and it got talking about spring being, <laughs> it, that was inclement weather and it got, uh, inclement weather. Yeah. we got to say that a lot this year. We got inclemented. <laughs> yeah, we got inclemented and it didn't happen. Um, but that schedule is also on um, the BSBO website and I think the next one is at Ottawa. Well, it looks like the website itself is a great hub for a lot of information about your programs that you have. You have a great calendar of upcoming events, as well as, of course, all the wonderful information about the biggest week in American birding, which, again, is coming up on May 4th through the 13th. Primarily, as you said before, um, the, the festival headquarters at Mommy Bay State Park, and there's a lot of activities at McGee Marsh. Are there other um, areas that the, that this takes place at? Are those pretty much the two areas that, that you'll see most of the birders? Or is it across the entire northern shore? Yeah, no, in fact, um, while we do have significant things happening at Black Swamp Bird Observatory um, at the entrance to McGee Marsh Wildlife Area, so Optics Alley is there, for example, and our nature store. The headquarters for the festival is at Maumee Bay Lodge and Conference Center, but we are taking birders on trips from Oak Openings all the way to Old Woman Creek. Oh, wow. um, we are spreading birders out along the lake shore, and because we don't just don't just want to show birders a good time when they're here, we really want to do good things for Northwest Ohio with um, with birding tourism. So along the way, as the the guides are in the vans with uh, participants, they're talking about the beauty of the lake shore, all the other attractions that are that make this such a special place. So we really take a comprehensive approach to this festival in terms of trying to do the most good for the place that we call home. Um, and we just want people to love birds. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about a geographical area that's, uh, what, all the way from Vermilion, so that about the farthest uh, east. Yeah, Old I would Woodland say Creek that out there, and then nearly to Toledo, out to Oregon. Yeah, it's it's actually past Toledo. Oak opening stretches all the way west of of the city of Toledo. So it's a it's a long stretch. Um, really, we're just really determined to introduce people to all the spectacular places to go birding and to visit, to eat, to shop, um, the attractions to visit in Northwest Ohio when the birding isn't so hot that it melts your face off. <laughs> <laughs> well, it does play a, uh, quite a large role, not just in, um, you know, just for birds themselves, but obviously in our economic development. I know there is a birding, uh, birders catalog or what do we call it? The birders guide? Uh, visitor's guide. Visitor's guide. Where can you pick up the visitor's guide? I think they're, 
mostly in major drop-offs where newspapers are. Okay. Gas stations. Bassett's where we are right now. <laughs> <laughs> right where the radio station is, Bassett's, they have them. And definitely you want to pick one of those up because so many great information inside of the guide there. Yeah, and not just about the festival. This is a, a very robust publication. Um, we work with um, newspaper partners to publish this. So it's an 80-page magazine. Um, the entire schedule for Biggest Week is in the center, but then there's tons of information about how to attract birds to your yard, how to get started in bird watching. And for visitors to the region, there's a, a really nice section on other fun places to visit. So again, featuring those attractions that um, are not directly related to birding, but that make Northwest Ohio so special. How many people do you expect to attract to the area that come to see the birds? Well, the festival becomes um, really a one-stop shop for people who are interested in birds, even if they don't register for the festival. So we surpassed the 90,000 visitor um, mark two years ago. So wow. between mid-April and mid-May, 90,000 people are traveling to Northwest Ohio uh, just to look at our birds. And after the biggest week is finished, after it concludes, the Bird Observatory sends out a post-event economic impact survey. We do ask people, um, you know, to rate their satisfaction about the festival because that helps us make it better. But we ask them a lot of travel information and then economic impact information. It's a $40 million economic impact. Wow. And what's really interesting about that is that it happens during a time that we've been considering the shoulder season. So the off season for tourism, Black Swamp Bird Observatory has created a birding industry where nothing existed before. It was a pretty sleepy time on the lakeshore. So all the small mom and pop shops on the lakeshore are opening like four to six weeks earlier, putting people back to work. Um, I'm eating way more ice cream <laughs> than I have ever eaten before the biggest week started. Um, but to date, so in the eight year history of the biggest week, we've had visitors register from every state, more than 50 countries and six continents. That's how good the birding is here. And that's how wonderful the hospitality is in Northwest Ohio. Well, off air, I was telling Jasmine, again, I, I haven't had a chance to really get out during birding week, although I've done some on my own, but not for so much shame. for the festival. I know, <laughs> but it's going to change, I promise. Yeah. But I know it from a hospitality standpoint, because I've worked in that arena for a long time and up here. And so we always do look forward to birding week because we know there's going to be a bump. And like you said, in, in um, April and May, we look forward to those extra days when we see people come through our establishment. So um, we do appreciate it. And again, it's great to know that Black Swamp Bird Observatory is the one that's really propelling that and really making it happen. And I think we owe you all a big thank you. Um, truly, we do. So Thank what else you. can you tell us? Anything else you need to tell us about the festival or anything else you want to let us know? Well, I do want to give a shout out to Lake Erie Shores and Islands. Um, before we started the, the festival, um, we really took our time um, and treated this with care and careful thought um, on how to do the most for the region with a festival. The wildlife agencies were doing a marvelous job of maintaining the habitat and making it accessible for the public, but really no one was doing any sort of compelling marketing. And we're birders, and we travel all over the world, so we knew how to share this message. But when I joined the Lake Erie Shores and Islands Board, and learning those tours and concepts and being able to incorporate that into our event, it made all the difference in the world and their support has been game changing. So we are so fortunate to have Lake Erie Shores and Islands, Larry Fletcher and his team just do an extraordinary job of promoting and marketing this area to so many different audiences, including birding. So they've been a really great partner. I want to make sure that we give them a shout out. Well, Kim and Jasmine, it's been so nice to have both of you come in today and talk a lot about birding up here on the North Shore and about the Black Swamp Bird Observatory. I finally got the name right after 25 <laughs> Nailed <it>. minutes. <laughs> I should get off air now then. <laughs> Again, Lace, thank you so much for coming in and we look forward to seeing those birds. I'm Stacey okay. Maple with Maple and morning on WPCR, PortPlintonRadio.com, and also heard on WPIB, PortonBayRadio.com. You've been listening to Maple in the Morning with your host, Stacy Maple. If you missed part of today's show or would like to hear it again, Maple in the Morning is available on demand at PortPlintonRadio.com or WPIB.com. Join us again here at 10 a.m. for Maple in the Morning with Stacy Maple on WPCR and WPIB Radio.